رحیم look at your shapes or colors but he looks at your heart and he looks at your actions this is what is going to be seen by Allah so do not drive away those that is Nabi Sassam is being said that the people like Hazrat Bilal and people like Hazrat Ammar don't turn them away from you who call on their Rabb morning and evening, seeking only to gain his favor. You are in no way accountable for their deeds, now, nor they are in any way accountable for yours. So if you drive them away, you shall be counted among the wrongdoers. That means we need to keep a company of the people who call on Allah because the company is very important. It is irrelevant that whether they belong to the rich elite side of the society or they belong to the poor side of the society because uh, in the case of the king of Rome Heraclius when Abu Sufyan visited him he asked a lot of questions from Abu Sufyan to confirm the coming of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu whether he was the real prophet or not and he asked him one of the questions that the followers of this prophet that you say are they the rich or the poor so Abu Sufyan said that these are the poor people so he replied to him that such is the case with the following of the messengers that initially the followers of the messengers have, have always been the poor people. Why? Because they have nothing to lose that way. Elite have a lot to lose from the worldly aspect. Whether it is their leadership or whether it is their status or whether it is their seat, they have all the money. They have a lot to lose. But poor people have very less to lose. They, it's, it's the belief that they go for. So here Allah says, you are not accountable for theirs and neither they are accountable for yours. So if you drive them away, you shall be counted among the wrongdoers. That's how we have made some of them, that is the poor who, the poor and the slaves who had accepted Islam, a means for testing the others, that is the people of the Quraysh. Now they were tested through these poor people. Will they come in the gatherings where they are sitting? And today also, if we have a school which is on a roadside, we have a school for the street children, will we send our children to those schools? So similarly the Quraysh, they used to then think that should we go in such gathering where people like Bilal and Ammar are sitting? Are these the people and then what they said was, are these the people whom Allah favours among us? That is, that is these low class people? Well does Allah not know best who are the grateful? Be alama bi shakirin, Allah knows who are the people in gratitude. When those who believe in our revelations come to you, say, peace be upon you. Salamun alaikum. Your Rabb has decreed mercy upon himself. If anyone among you commits evil because of ignorance and thereafter repents and mends his ways, you will find Allah forgiving mercy. Well, look at the Rahma of Allah. If we did not know about anything, even if it is shirk and I didn't know that this is shirk, and if I am told that you are committing shirk and I mend my way, just because I was ignorant, I didn't know about it. I did a bidat, I did any gunai kabira or I did any gunai sagira that I knew, I didn't know before. And Allah says, then they mend their ways, then they will find Allah merciful. Thus we spell out our revelation so that the way of the culprits may become evident. O Muhammad Sallam, tell them, I am forbidden to worship those whom you call upon besides Allah. Say, I am not going to follow your wishes. Wishes. If I do, I would be lost and cease to be from the rightly guided. Say, I am on a clear proof from my Rabb which you have denied. But the punishment of Allah which you are in such a rush to see is not in my power. No one has the authority of passing judgment except Allah. He declares the truth and he is the best of judges. Say, if what you rush to see, that is the punishment, was in my power, the matter between you and me would have been settled long ago. It is said that the uh, 
disbelievers of the Quraysh, it said that the angels of the mountains called and greeted Nabi Sallam and then said, O Muhammad Sallam, verily Allah has heard how your people responded to you and he has sent me to you so that you could order me to do what you wish. If you like, I will let the al aqs Shaiban, that is the two mountains to the north and south of Makkah, fall on them. Nabi Sallam said, no, but I hope that Allah will let them generate offspring who will worship Allah alone and will worship none besides him. This comes in Muslim. So here it says that if you if if punishment was in my hand then this would have been done long ago but Allah knows best how to deal with wrongdoers he alone has the keys of the unseen treasures of which no one knows except him he knows whatever is in the land and in the sea there is not a single leaf that falls without his knowledge there is neither a grain in the darkness of the earth nor anything fresh or dry which has not been recorded in a clear book there are five things which comes in the hadith that no one knows except Allah. One is the coming of the hour when the trumpet will be blown. Number two is what is born in the wombs of a mother. Number three, when is it going to rain? Number four, no one knows what he is going to earn tomorrow. And number five is that no one, no one knows where is he going to die? Which land is he going to? These are the five things in a hadith is clearly said that no one knows except Allah. He is the one who takes your souls at night when we go to sleep and knows what you do during the day. Then next day raises you up again to complete your allotted span of life. To him you shall all return. Then he will notify you all that you have done. He is the subjugator over his servants and sends guardians, angels over you at length. When death approaches any one of you, our angels takes his soul and they are not negligent in performing their duty. Meaning when Malakul Maut comes, then he does not see whether this man has children behind and he, he will leave a widow behind or his parents are too old or his children are too young or he will go through so much pain. Then when the time comes, then it is prescribed. Then those souls are brought back to Allah, their real master. Beware, he is the judge and he is the swiftest in settling accounts. Ask them, who saves you from the disasters in the darkness of the land and of the sea? When you call upon him in open humility and silent terror, if you deliver us from this affliction, we shall become truly grateful. Say, Allah delivers you from those and all other calamities, yet you commit shirk. Say, he has the power to send calamities on you from above and from below, or to split you into discordant fractions to make you taste the violence of one another. In a hadith which comes in Muslim, it is said, Nabi Sassam said, I asked my Lord for three. I asked him not to destroy my ummah by drowning and he gave that to me. I asked him not to destroy my ummah by famine and he gave that to me. And I asked him not to make them taste the violence of one another but he did not give that to me and this is why we see that the Muslims are divided into sects. See how we present our revelations over and over again so that they may understand the reality. But your people are rejecting that is this Quran although it is the very truth. Tell them I am not appointed as your caretaker. For every prophecy there is an appointed time. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ يَخُودُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا فَآرِزْ أَنْهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُودُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِ when you see those who are engaged in arguments about our revelations, turn away from them until they change their topic of discussion. If Satan ever makes you forget this commandment, then as soon as you realize, withdraw from the company of wrongdoers. Though righteous people will not be held responsible for wrongdoers' actions, yet it is their duty to admonish them. Perhaps they may refrain from evil deeds. So if anybody is sitting and making a mockery of Allah's ayah, then we should get up from there. And if we will be sitting with them, and laughing with them or making comments with them then we are a part of them so Allah says if shaitan makes you forget and you enjoy them and as soon as you realize just move away from there and at the same time we need to remind others also Perhaps they may refrain from evil deeds. Leave those people alone who take their religion as mere play and amusement and are deceived by the life of this world. However, keep on admonishing them through the Quran. Let their souls be exposed by their own sinful deeds. Will they not have any protector? They will not have any protector or intercessor to rescue them from Allah. And if they seek to offer every imaginable ransom, it shall not be accepted from them. 
Such are those who are deprived by their own sinful deeds. They will get boiling water to drink and painful torture for their denial of the truth. Ask the mushrikeen, should we call on those instead of Allah who can neither benefit us nor harm us? Should we turn upon our heels after Allah has guided us to the right way? And for this, we have the duas in which we see Nabi Sallallahu used to say, Ya Musarif al Kulubi Sarif Kalbi Allah Twa'atik, Ya Mukallib al Kulubi Sabbit Kalbi Allah Dinik. Ya Allah, give us the tawfiq of remaining steadfast on your religion and your obedience. Like the one whom Shaitan has misled and is wandering around in the land, while his friends are calling him to the right way, shouting, Come this way, tell them Allah's guidance is the only guidance. We are commanded to surrender that is become Muslims to the rub of the worlds. It's just like when you're going on a path and all of a sudden you lose the track. Now that you've lost the track, your friends are still going on the same path and then they call you that we found the way, come back, join us. And now this person says, no, I don't want to join you. This is, sim this is just equivalent to what Allah is saying here that he has gone off the track because of shaitan and now shaitan has grasped him so much that he's not letting him come back whereas Prophet Muhammad is calling people back on the right path. His friends are calling back on the right path that come back but he says no I'm fine now I don't need to come back you carry on. To establish salah and fear him before whom you shall all assemble on the day of resurrection. He is the one who has created the heavens and the earth, earth to manifest the truth. And the people of Iman know that Allah has not created this without any reason. On the day when he will say, be, it shall be, that is the day of resurrection. His word is the truth. It is said that Israfil alayhi salam has held the sur in his mouth and lowered his forehead awaiting the command to blow in it. He shall be the sole sovereign on the day when the trumpet will be blown. He has the full knowledge of the invisible and the visible. He is the wise, the aware. وَإِذَا قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ آزَرَ أَتَّتَّخِذُ أَسْنَامًا آلِهَا Tell them about Ibrahim a.s. who said to Azar, his, brother, his father, Are you taking idols for gods? Surely I see you and your people in manifest error. Now you, we will see that Allah Ta'ala is going to give the example of Ibrahim a.s. that through the universe, how did he how did he make his people understand that they have to believe in one God and not to go into the worshipping of idols? We showed Ibrahim salam the kingdoms of the heavens and the earth as we show you with examples from nature. So he became one of the firm believers. When the night drew its shadow over him, he saw a star and said, This is my Rabb. But when it set, he said, I do not love to worship such a God that fades away. Afterwards, he saw the moon shining. He said, this is my rub. But when it also said, he cried, if my rub does not guide me, I shall certainly become one of those who go astray. Then when he saw the sun, which was even brightly shining, he said, this must be my rub. It is larger than the other two. But when it also said, he exclaimed, oh, my people, I'm done with your shirk associating partners with Allah. As far as I'm concerned, I will turn my face being upright to him who has created the heavens and the earth and I'm not one of the mushrikeen. When his people started arguing with him, he told them, will you argue with me about Allah whereas he himself has guided me? Because the people of Zat Ibrahim salam used to worship the idols and they also used to worship the seven planets. And by this, and especially they used to worship sun, the moon and the Venus. And so by this observation, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam tried to argue it out with them that see, everything that goes away, that disappears, cannot be the creator. The creator has to be there. And if you are going to fall for such things, then you are in manifest error. Do not fear those whom you take for gods beside him. None can harm me unless my rub so wills. The knowledge of my rub encompasses everything. Why don't you get admonition? Why should I fear your idols when you are not afraid of your actions of making them partners with Allah for which he has not given you any sanction? Which one from the two parties of us deserves to feel secure? Tell me if you know the truth as a matter of fact, those who believe and do not taint their faith with wrongdoings will feel more secure and will be better guided. This was the argument with we furnished Ibrahim alayhi salam against his people. And then as Ibrahim alayhi salam, we see that he, he left his people. 
they didn't con they didn't get convinced he showed them the arguments and then he left them we exalt in rank whom we please surely your rab is wise aware we gave him isaq now this was the legacy of hazrat ibrahim alaihi salam that from him the offsprings come who believed in allah we gave him ishaq and yaqub and guided them all as we guided nuh alaihi salam before them and among his descendants were daud and suleiman ayub yusuf musa and harun alaihi salam thus do we reward those who do good to others other descendants include zakaria yahya isa ilyas all of them were right so you see the offspring you see the generations that then came from hazrat ibrahim alaihi salam these were all the prophets that were sent to bani israel and ismail and alisha yunus and luth we exalted every one of them over the worlds as we exalted some of their forefathers their children and their brothers we chose them for our service and guided them through the right way this is the guidance from allah he bestows it upon whom he pleases of his devotees if they had committed shirk all their deeds would have gone void such were the people to whom we gave the book wisdom and prophethood now if this be these people deny the this guidance it does not matter we would bestow this guidance upon other people who would not disbelieve o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam those were the people who were rightly guided by allah therefore follow their guidance and tell these people i am not asking you any compensation for this work of delivering the message to you this message is nothing but a reminder to all the worlds those people have not valued the attributes of allah the way his attributes should be valued who say allah has never revealed anything to a human being ask them who then sent down the book that was tora which musa alai salam brought a light and guidance guidance for mankind you have transcribed it you have transcribed it on separate sheets publishing some and suppressing much of that given knowledge which neither you nor your forefathers previously possessed if they do not answer then just say allah and leave them alone with the discourse of their useless arguments this is the blessed book like the one given to musa alai salam which we have revealed confirming what came before it that you o muhammad may warn the people living in the mother city makka and those who live around her those who believe in the hereafter will believe in this book and will be steadfast in taking care of their salah who can be more wicked than the one who invents a lie against allah because shirk is the biggest lie and the biggest zulm or says this was revealed to me now this is referring to musalma bin kazam who proclaimed to be a prophet while nothing was revealed to him or the one who says i can reveal the like of what allah has revealed like bringing in the verses of the quran if you could only see these wrong doers when they are in the agonies of death and the angels stretch forth their hands saying take out your soul today you will be rewarded with a disgraceful punishment for saying falsehood against allah which you had no right to say and showing arrogance against his revelations allah adds to what the angels said so you have come back to us alone as we created you at the first time leaving behind all that which we gave you in that world and we don't see with you your intercessors whom you claim to be allah's partners in your affairs all your ties have been cut off and what you presumed has failed you surely it is allah who causes the seed and the fruit stone to split and sprout he brings forth the living from the dead and the dead from the living dead from the living and the living from the dead this also relates to uh, people for example from uh, from a non believer we see that a muslim is born and from the muslim even we see sometimes like from the for example as a nuh alaihi salam his son never reverted the father was at ibrahim never reverted and the grandfather was at muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so all this is can also be taken as examples from these and similarly like if you see like from a chicken you see the the egg that comes out from the living it is allah who does all this then why are you being misled he causes the day break from the dark he makes the night for rest and makes the rising and setting of the sun and the moon for you to determine times these are the arrangement of allah the all knowing he is the one who has made the stars for you so that you might find your way thereby in the darkness whether you are on the land or in the sea
We have spelled out our revelations very clearly for people of common sense. وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَنْشَأَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا He is the one who has created you from a single soul and granted you dwelling, dwelling meaning the place of the dunya on earth and a resting place in the hereafter. This refers to the life in the grave. We have spelled out our revelation very clearly for people of understanding. وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءَ It is he who sends down rain water from the sky. فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ نَبَاتَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ And therewith produces vegetations of all kinds. فَأَخْرَجْنَا مِنْهُ قَدِرًا نُخْرِجُ مِنْهُ حَبًّا مُتْرَاكِبًا He brings forth green crops producing grain piled up in the air. Palm trees laden with clusters of dates hanging within reach. Gardens of grapes, olives and pomegranates. Though their fruit resembles in kind, yet is different in variety. It's the same soil. It's the same earth. And once the fruit is out, whether it's the color, whether it's the shape, whether it's the design, whether it's the flavor, whether it's the size of the seeds, look at the size of the banana and the peel of the banana and look at the peel of the orange and the seeds inside the orange. Then look at the pomegranate. When you open, it's, it's red. When you see from outside, it's red. But when you cut open a watermelon, it is green from the outside, but it is red from the inside. Similarly, look at the shapes of the seeds. I mean, it's just mind boggling. It just goes into, puts you into amazement. That look at the strawberry. And all these fruits, when you, when you taste them, they are different. Even if you go and buy one fruit this week, you go after 15 days to buy the same fruit, the taste may be different. You may buy the same grapes from Pakistan, they will taste different. You buy the same grapes from America, they will be different. But they are all the same in their, in their names. But yet you will see the varieties coming out of grapes. You will see the varieties of mangoes. You will see the varieties of oranges. Look at their fruits as they yield and ripen. Behold in these things there are signs for true believers. Yet they make the jinns which have been created out of fire as the partners of Allah, whereas he is their creator and also ascribe to him sons and daughters without having any knowledge. Glory to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yasifoon. He is highly exalted, far above what they ascribe. Badi usamawati wal ard. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Anna yakunu lahu waladun walam takul lahu sahiba. How could he have a son when he has no companion? He has created everything and is aware of everything. That is Allah, your Rab. La ilaha illahu. There is no God but him. Khaliku kulli shayin fa'buduhu. The creator of everything therefore worship him he is the guardian of everything no vision can grasp him while he grasps all vision while in this world none of the prophets even were able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but in Akhira man is going to be given the body and the eyesight that we will be able to see Allah he is the subtle subtle the aware now there have come to you clear proofs from your Rab to open your eyes Therefore, anyone who will open his eyes, it is good for his own soul. And anyone who will play blind, it is to his own harm. And I am the prophet, not assigned as a keeper over you. Thus do we explain our revelations over and over again, so that the unbelievers may say, you have learned from someone, but not from Allah. And that this may become clear to people of understanding. Follow what is revealed to you from your Rabb. There is no God but Him. And turn aside from the mushrikeen. Walau Allahu ma ashraku. If Allah wanted, they would not be mushrikeen. We have neither appointed you their keeper nor made you their guardian. O believers, do not insult those whom these mushrikeen call upon besides Allah. Because if we are going to abuse their gods, in return they are going to abuse our Allah. So then we should not do so. Similarly, in a hadith it is also said that do not abuse your own parents. So the Sahaba asked, how do we abuse our parent? He said that if you will abuse someone else's parent, he in return is going to abuse your parent. وَلَا تَسُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيُسُبُّ اللَّهَ 
adwam bi ghairi ilm o believers do not insult those whom these mushrikeen call upon besides allah lest in retaliation they call bad names to allah out of their ignorance thus we have made the deeds of every group of people seem fair to them in the end they will all return to their rab and then he will inform them of the reality of all what they had done these mushrikeen solemnly swear by allah that if a sign came to them they would most certainly believe in your prophethood say all signs are watched faced by allah what should make you understand that if a sign comes to them they will still not believe we will turn away their hearts and their eyes from the truth because of their attitude which prompted them to disbelieve in the first place and we will leave them to wander in their rebellious wrongdoing wa akhir dawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ah